Let's get started. Hi there, I'm Anastasia. I'm a Webflow template designer. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how I develop a new Webflow template in Webflow using the design that I've created in Figma. So let's get started. That's exciting because this time I tried something different. This style was completely new for me and I got inspired from another creator. So I developed an event website template where I have a homepage that features the upcoming festivals. You can see this nice two column layout green, pretty minimalistic and very colorful, which is new for me, honestly, because I mostly work in minimalist style with basic colors, light and dark theme. This one is my first colorful webflow web template. All right. So, so I have blog on this home homepage some quiet reviews and I wanted to show the reviews similar to the Polaroid photo shoots. I think these ones look more like Polaroid style. And here I have sponsors cards. On hover I want them to show the background image with some logo in the center. I'm going to use just a logo placeholder for these cards. For the reason that the people who purchase this template will replace them anyway, let's simplify things, right? At the bottom of the homepage, I have newsletter subscription plus social media buttons. So I used icons, eight free icons for this template. And those are doodle style icons that are free to use. So if you want to use them, go ahead. All right. Also, I've got a festival page with post I designed just for this template. This one is supposed to be background video. Arty on hover, I want background image appear and I want to create a nice smooth animation that will react on my mouse movement. So that means that this image is going to move like this, probably rotate a little bit. I'll figure it out. Again, sponsors block and go to action block which looks like a kitty. Are you okay? Oh no. My cat wants to get out of this room. Should I allow it? Marilyn. The cat didn't want to listen to my work stuff. That's boring for her. I love my job. Okay. So, and this blog is a call to action that looks like a ticket page and footer. Honestly, I haven't worked much on the footer yet. This one is just a spare call to action design in case I need it. And another page that I have done is the artist page. So I haven't done the blog page and get ticket pages. Get ticket is supposed to be a third party plugin. So this, this would be an external link that leads you to some third party website where you can purchase a ticket and blog is going to be pretty similar to this. I'm going to reuse it in development. Okay, let's get started. Pretty exciting. Where do I begin? Normally I begin with creating a blank template, blank canvas in Webflow. And I start with creating the navigation bar. Let's start with the navigation bar. Right. So here we are. Let's get started with the navigation bar design. Let's call it now bar with 100%. And what else, what else do we have here? Container. I like doing it like this. So why, why three? Okay. It seems like I, I have some styles. Oh, I need to remove those. Okay. Now I can rename it. Okay. So here we have container, brand logo, now menu. Okay. So now that I've created a project in Webflow, let's go to site settings and upload a font that we're going to use. So we are going to use a Google font, which is Ram, where is it? Ram, 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 not Rubik, Ram Raisin, right, add font. Okay, is, is there another font that I'm going to use? Yes, DM Mono, let's go back, choose DM Mono. Perfect, I'm going to add medium weight as well. Okay, we've done that. Let's go back to the designer and I'm going to choose the, the, where is the font that we just said it? Oh, here it is. Ram raising. Perfect. Size 
16 pixels. Blind height would be 1.5 dash. And color, the primary color, let's let it be black. Just the black color. Okay, now we're going to now menu design. Okay, what else I'm going to do here? I'm going to I'm going to start with the logo. Right, so here's our logo file. I want to minimize it just a little bit. The frames. By the way, I took this logo from Icons 8 free library and I can download it in SVG format, which is awesome. Let's rename it Frenzy logo. Frenzy is the name of this template to be. Okay, let's export it. Downloads. Let's go to the desk. Perfect. I'm downloading only this part of the logo because I want this one to be the text, which is going to change color for different page pages. Okay, let's go. So for this one, I think I just body orange. And also, I will create a swatch orange. Perfect. Because it will allow me to reuse it. And if I want to change this color, me or the person who uses this template later, he will be able just to click edit and edit the swatch and it will be updated on any element that uses this swatch color. Yep, I love using swatches. Okay, and now let's upload our logo file. Choose an image, frenzy logo, cool, brand logo. Okay, let's set maximum width to 120 pixels. And for the brand, I set pattern to be zero right away. Because for some reason, it will add the pattern of 10 later. I, I don't need it. So I prefer to set it up manually straight away. And let's add text block. Okay, now we need to add this one and the next, next. To logo. You may notice that I use very simple class. It's so because I want users who purchase this template to be able to understand what this class is related to so that they could easily change or update it later. Okay, and here I want to use 32 pixels. Looks good. Okay, and now let's let's style and work on the nav links. So here I'm using Rubik font. I think I should use the mono here instead. It's just, that's just me. I, I forgot to update it. The medium, that's better. So, okay, let's style the nav link. Okay, and now we are using this class. By the way, I just realized that it's better to, to use the DM mono for all the texts on the websites and to use this drama raising font for all the headings and the accent elements that would be more correct because this font is more readable than this one this one is readable as well but for the body text i think we should go with this one okay so we've got festivals let's start with capital letters blog and what else sponsors okay and in design, I have them all capital. Let's reuse it. A menu and menu button, which appears right here. Also, I would like to have a button right here. Let's call it button and let's do it. Let's style the button element. So I'm going to set up the background color and to add it to the swatches. Oh, it's called Indian Red. It's a beautiful name. So we've got... 40 and 30 buttons. Buttons, 40. Oh my god. I think something's not right about it. Look, this button is huge. Oh, here's what happened. So I designed it for big screens. All right. That's not a problem. It's the first time. <laughs> the first time I do it. We just, just adjust everything. That's totally fine. Okay. I think now it looks good. Get ticket. It should be all capital. And I want them to have black background. Let's add black to the swatches as well. Why not? Mm -hmm. Black. Okay, good. So now what I want to do 
is I'll set the background color for the nav bar to orange and actually I'm going to update the color to no I'm not going to do it because you can see we failed to set up a good contrast ratio and I tend to follow those recommendations so I'm going to back up with black one is perfect it's like two points that's exactly what we need for a great web flow template what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a wrap wrap so the wrapper will wrap the nav bar contents and it will be easier for me to work with it so I'm going to make it flex justify align center and I'm going to add a bit patterns like 12 pixels like this okay and now now link let's adjust now links with 12 20 I prefer to set it up manually get ticket I can see that it needs a bit bigger stroke okay and I want to give it some letter spacing for more readability looks good and now let's take a look so you can see the novelty they're close to the logo not the button let's work on it so with now i'm going to set it to grow if possible and uh, to the button i'm going to give it a combo glass in navbar and i'm going to set the left margin to auto it didn't work because I didn't set the nav menu layout to flex, right? Still, it didn't work. Because I've got here, mm, let's set margin, margins to zero manually. Okay, and now let's add some margin or padding. I think margin would work better in this case. Exactly like this. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Thanks. I just increased the logo size, the text in the logo size just for me because i just felt like it okay and we are going to set container width let's add it first to 920 and add some patterns like 40 or 20 pixels because i want our website to be really big and look really great on the large screens okay so what are we going to do next is stop touching my face next we're going to develop the main screen was going to be awesome. So what I want here is I want the pictures moving on scroll, but the text to stay sticky to the top. I think I don't want the nav bar to be sticky or fixed. I just want users to be able to scroll past it. Okay, so let's go and create a section with 100%. Give it a container with existing class Perfect. And let's add buttons to this section. Let's give it 100 this time. Normally I would go for everything that divides by 4 pixels. Something like 80 pixels or 64. I just got used to this scheme, but I'm trying something new here, okay? So there's going to be something different and I'm going to work different this time. Okay, and now I'm going to create a div block inside of the container inside of the container and I'm going to give it a class home page zero wrap let's lay out it to vertical flex vertical center it with height let's start with 100 and let's make it sticky to the very top yes like this okay we'll get back to it a bit later now I'm going to add a background shape why background shape? Why did I start with it? Just because I felt like it. That's it. Set it to absolute. Okay, and now I'm going to export this background shape. Let's call it. Let's. I'm going to just export it as star one. Why didn't I export it from here? Because it would crop those elements that are not visible. You can preview it and see this, or you may not. But I think I can see that there are some parts that are cropped. Just in case, I would suggest doing it like this. Okay, let's upload this file. Perfect. Background shape is done. We are going to define its width with percentages. 
let's say maximum 85 percent and let's position it to the top okay looks good now let's add the main heading let's actually wrap it straight away relative and set the position to relative and let's select all h1 headings and give the font give it the font styling let's do something like 1.4 and let's start with this one okay it looks too big right now really maybe i should do it like this it shouldn't be sticky by the way i just realized it shouldn't be sticky let's start with transparent we'll figure it out a bit later okay unforgettable open air music festivals select all h1 headings let's make it capitalized with every word and what i want to do is i want to give it let's try white color it says contrast okay let's use black i trust i trust that i'm going to align center the text inside of the homepage hero wrap and let's update the line height because now the space is too big between those okay looks better by the way fail oh no black is better let's start with black okay what else do we have here we've got two images let's copy them reset the rotation settings let's call it hero image one and this one would be hero image two let's export them in format and to x export save great so this one should be sticky and we are going to set up the height to something like this yes that's what i'm going to do but i want it to be much higher maybe like this right something like this would be cool okay let's make the homepage hero wrap relative because we are going to add more images to the background and create a scroll effect so those two images they wait a lot Normally what I do, I go to compressedpack.com. It's like one of the fastest way to compress images. It doesn't give you always the perfect result, but it's good enough for the website development. I think that the perfect option would be to compress images using Adobe Photoshop, but for this template, I'm going to use it like quick. Maybe I'll come back and update the images a bit later. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Er okay i've uploaded those two images oh by the way there is a new cool feature in webflow where you can select images and click compress and what webflow does they compress two images to the webp format which weighs comparably less than jpeg or png okay let's create a div block and call it images prep and let's make it absolute and also i want to lay out it to vertical just vertical let's start with just vertical got it and now i'm adding the first image let's give it a class hero image just hero image for now and create absolute class again absolute maximum width of 25 pixels yes 40 looks good okay and now what are we going to do we're going to move it to the background so that the text would be up front and let's give it a combo class one and move it to the top right okay good let's copy and paste it delete combo class one add combo class two replace image so it already have combo class of two let's decrease its maximum width and move it to the bottom left yes something like this looks good now i'm going to add an icon image sticky hero text layout to vertical because i have some nice magdalene or something like this oh it's mandalene mandalene icon okay i'm going to export it as png i didn't get it in svg because for the templates we're using only free resources free icons, free fonts, free photo stock, pictures or videos. So unfortunately, this should be PNG. Okay, now I'm going to upload it. Mandolin. Okay. Hey, are you finished? Mandolin. 
Come on. I can choose image. You can see it didn't upload. Mandolin, please upload. Done. Perfect. Give it a class icon. Sizing to not size at all. Please don't size. And maximum 100 pixels for now. No, no, no. Don't leave the site, please. Okay. Looks not bad. Not exactly like in the design yet, but we're getting there. Okay. What we are going to do now is create an interaction. Let's select hero images wrap and go to element trigger while scrolling in view. Let's create a new interaction for this one. Scroll interaction, hero images, scroll animation. Let's select this one and set it to move and rotate and add here, rotate as well. Okay. As for move, let me go to the left side for now. So what I want to do is I want it to move to minus 12 viewpoint height. And I want it to start with probably 15 degrees. And as we scroll, I want it to go back to zero viewpoint height and rotate just a little bit. Let's preview how it looks like. This one was really slight interaction. Let's change keyframe to 50 and preview again. Not much is happening actually because the image is sliding away. So let's move it to 30 viewpoint high and let's start with 20. So now it lags. Okay, this obviously should be right here. This should be to keyframe 80. Let's try. That's better. That's much better. That's almost what I wanted it to behave like. But I wanted it to be much higher. Let's probably change it to minus 10 and preview the animation again. Not exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to set it back to zero. Zero percent. No. Oh my God. Sliding with those hands, those powerful hands made me exit Webflow. Oh. Kitty, matter. my cat wants to enter. My cat is back. Oh my God, she's so cute. <laughs> it's funny. All right, let's keep going. What I see is if I change keyframe to something like 40, that would act exactly as I want it to act. Wow, that's awesome. So cool. And now let's work on the second image. By the way, where it is? Where it is? I need it so much. Let's add move and rotate right here where's the second image hey my god i think it it needs with 100 percent right right where are you oh my god an image disappeared what is there why can't i see it but what i can see is that this heading is way too wide let's set maximum to 15 characters maybe probably 17 characters a bit better it's like looks good okay now when the second image is back let's work on it i'm just playing around with location okay now let's go back to the our uh, scrolling in view animation so here it is rotate let's take a look how it i wanted to start something like this and then rotate to circular now let's start with 10 degrees and as for movement let's start with zero viewpoint height and now let's duplicate it and go somewhere here just to test it okay let's preview what's happening okay so now i want this one to be next to this keyframe so that's going to hmm i see oh no not again oh no that's so traumatic. I'm back. As I noticed, that might be too much. But actually, let's try with something like this first. This is too much. Too much of the rotation. Let's start with five. Maybe that would be a bit better. Still rotates. No way. Oh, emotional. Damn it. Okay. Calm down. Calm down. I'm calm. So here we are again. I want this image to probably move a bit faster. That's exactly what I want. 
perfect. But honestly, I'm a bit upset because I couldn't make this font white. That would be so much better in white. Let's preview the website and white screen. You know what I think? I think I need to make this star fixed with the heading. That would work much better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the heading in the div block and name it heading wrap. I'm going to make it relative and I'm going to make it flex horizontal centered. And I'm going to make the background shape auto like this with set index minus one. Let's see what's going on. Well, sticky hero needs to be 800 width to make it work better. Okay. And let's make this background shape 100% or maybe even bigger 120. Okay. That's not exactly what I wanted. I want this shape to remain on the background actually, but I want it to remain fixed. There is another way to do it. Let's delete it from here and let's unwrap it. Let's add this one back to the home page. Background shape. Let's duplicate it and say wrap with as defined with and set it to sticky. I see what's going on. It shouldn't be sticky, it should be absolute. Now let's reuse the class background shape. Delete the position. Let's make it sticky to the top the background shape wrap vertical centered not centered auto let's use height 100 percent and let's start with alignment order let's do it like this i think that's exactly where i should stop today so i'll be back working on more so today i developed the navigation and the main hero section with a nice scrolling interactions and let's keep working let's keep going on this one tomorrow i'll be back bye bye